All right, we now know more about outer space than we've ever known before, and one big reason for that, the Hubble telescope. Believe it or not, it is about to be 30 years old. But it's still sending back images that are stunning and changing what we know about space. NASA astronaut Michael Good was on the final service mission to Hubble and joined Justin Horn to talk about Hubble's future. All right, very exciting morning. We're talking to Mike Good, a NASA astronaut. He's got some information on the Hubble telescope. So uh, let's get started. Thanks uh, to the upgrades you made to the Hubble telescope. Uh, it continues to get breathtaking images, including Hubble's largest deep view of the universe. Uh, Mike, can you show us some of these new images? Sure, good morning, Justin. Great to be with you. I'd like to share with you one, one of the new images that's uh, coming down from Hubble. We like to call this the legacy deep field. Um, so this uh, Hubble stared at a, just a small part of the night sky, uh, about the size of a full moon. But Justin, what you're looking at here, all those blips of light, those are all galaxies with millions and millions of stars each. So we're looking at over uh, almost a quarter million galaxies in this picture. It's a compilation of over 16 years of Hubble uh, staring into the night sky. So, and looking back at some of the first light of the universe over 13 billion years ago. That is incredible. And, and can you talk about some of the types of upgrades you've made to Hubble? Sure, 10 years ago today, I was on orbit inside the Hubble telescope uh, on the final servicing mission. And for, uh, by servicing mission, uh, I mean we did some scheduled maintenance, we made some upgrades and did some repairs. Here you can see an astronaut coming out of the uh, airlock and going into the payload bay, which became our garage to work on Hubble for over the uh, five days of spacewalks. But we did some uh, scheduled maintenance. We replaced the uh, batteries and the gyros, things that will, uh, enable Hubble to last longer. We also did some upgrades. We took up brand new cameras and uh, a spectrograph, replaced those. We also did some repairs on orbit, uh, some surgery inside a Hubble to repair a faulty camera and a faulty spectrograph. So by the time we left 10 years ago, Hubble was at the apex of its capabilities and uh, continues to do, uh, do some great work and send uh, back new discoveries every day. Uh, videos, the video is awesome to watch. I have to imagine, what is it like to work on this massive telescope in space? Well, getting to you know put on a spacesuit and go out uh, and do a spacewalk was definitely one of the highlights of uh, of my mission. Here you can see me on the end of the robotic arm, and I'm uh, helping my spacewalking buddy Mike Massimino get into the telescope. Uh, here I'm celebrating uh, one of the successes I had. Um, uh, swapping out one of the gyros on board, but you can see just the uh, the views from space are spectacular. It's pretty cool to be out there uh, outside the ship and not looking through a window, but only looking through your visor, uh, only the visor of the spacesuit between me and the vacuum of space. So, uh, pretty incredible, uh, an incredible privilege to be able to go outside and do that. No doubt. And, and Hubble's going to be 30 years old next year. So how is it? How is it holding up? Yeah, hard to believe. Um, it's doing great, it's going strong. It continues to uh, unlock the mysteries of the universe. Um, we just passed uh, 1.4 million observations that Hubble's uh, taken over the years. So, um, you know, when we went up to do the final servicing mission 10 years ago, we were hoping to get five more years out of Hubble, um, but it continues to go strong and hopefully it'll go uh, well into the 2020s and continue to uh, provide images not only for astronomers and astrophysicists but for teachers and students. This is the People's Telescope, so it's uh, there's something for everyone to learn here. Absolutely, Mike. I, I, I got to ask you, as someone who's been to space before, how excited are you that NASA is uh, planning to return to the moon? Oh, I'm super excited. Uh, that's a it was a great announcement. I just remember uh, as a young boy in Ohio watching the astronauts, the Apollo astronauts launch and, and land on the moon and it was certainly inspiring to me as a kid. Uh, I probably wasn't smart enough to, to even dream about being an astronaut at that time but uh, it certainly inspired me to, to study math and science in school. I knew I wanted to be a part of this business to, to build and uh, you know design and build airplanes and rockets. So. Um, but now we're going to go back to the moon to stay. We're going to build bases there, and it's really a stepping stone for us to go on to Mars someday. Mike, that's incredible stuff. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, great to be with you. Have a great day. What a great interview, Justin. And
It's so mind blowing to think about this colonizing the moon, putting bases up, then going yeah. to Mars. This is so sci fi. Uh, yeah, it'll make your brain hurt if you think about it too much. But uh, yeah, they, they, these are some smart guys. And to be able to do what they've done with Hubble mm -hmm. and to get the images that we can see, uh, it's just. Those were all galaxies? Mm hmm. Yeah. Millions of galaxies containing millions of stars. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And remember, the, it's like that much of the galaxy it's looking at. I know. <sighs> Unbelievable. Who designs this stuff? Rocket scientists, yeah. I know. But. Really, really <laughs> smart people over there at NASA. But uh, yeah, Really neat stuff. Very interesting to talk to him.